Здравствуйте, товарищи. Мы находимся evening, в Вашингтонском белом доме, в постоянной резиденции главы американского государства, в овальном кабинете American government. This is the place where the presidents of the United States do their work. President Reagan is receiving us in order to give us. And because we were very strictly limited in time, I think we should start with questions. Right away. Mr. President, you will be taking a visit to Moscow. This will be your first visit. В нашу страну с какими чувствами вы едете в Советский Союз и что ожидаете от очередной встречи на высшем уровне? Well, this will be the fourth meeting between the General Secretary and myself. I'm obviously looking forward to the trip for one reason, because I have never been there, and I'm looking forward to seeing your country and well, as much as, as possible with the meetings that will be going on. And we have discussed uh, in the previous meetings uh, with your General Secretary such matters as uh, uh, arms reductions, and uh, we've been successful on the one treaty. We're both uh, working on uh, the, uh, the present treaty that we call START, the 50% reduction of, of uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles, but also uh, some differences that we've had on our uh, interpretation of human rights on regional affairs, and uh, we're greatly heartened by the fact that uh, your forces are withdrawing from Afghanistan, and on bi bilateral issues, such things as uh, rescue at sea agreements, uh, fisheries agreements, things of that kind, in which we've made uh, uh, great progress. Господин президент, в Женеве, Рикьявике, Вашингтоне вами и Михаилом Сергеевичем Горбачевым сделаны шаги большого значения. Благодаря им уменьшилась военная угроза, стало осуществляться на практике сотрудничество между нашими странами. И это несмотря на различия в социальных системах, разные идеологии, разные взгляды на мир. Какие, на ваш взгляд, имеются возможности для дальнейшего продвижения по этому пути? Well, I have to be optimistic about it. I have uh, read Perestroika cover to cover, and uh, the goals that were outlined there for your own country and by your present leader. Uh, were such that I think it would uh, reduce some of the differences between us further and make it possible for uh, future leaders of our countries to uh, uh, eliminate, uh, well, what I called for in, the, in our first meeting in Geneva, when just the General Secretary and I were talking to each other. I pointed out that we, didn't mistrust each other because we were armed. We were armed because we mistrust each other. And that we had a unique opportunity, the two of us, to go to work not just to try and reduce arms, but to reduce the causes of the mistrust. And I think we've carried on in that manner in the succeeding meetings. Я хотел бы спросить вас, господин президент, как вы считаете, в сегодняшнем мире что важнее сила или сила мускулов или сила разума? Well, the power of reason, but I think that can be achieved uh, more quickly if we show our mutual desire for a peaceful world by eliminating some of the most horrendous of the weapons, such as the nuclear weapons. I made a statement to the parliaments of one or two other countries several years ago, and have been repeating it since, and I've heard some of your officials say the same thing. A nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. 
э, если э, исходить из того, что ядерной войны не должно быть, то э, есть ли смысл продолжать производить оружие? Well, I would think that uh, once, I think the, the weapons that are the most destabilizing are the nuclear weapons. The idea in the minds of people that once those weapons are fired, uh, devastation is going to, to follow. And uh, there is no way to, to halt them. They, they're more destabilizing than the people's Uh, concern about weapons that we're familiar with, uh, airplanes, battleships, things of this kind, artillery. And so I think that this is the immediate problem. But then, if we can continue to work out our differences and a better understanding, then I think we engage in uh, the reduction of, of uh, conventional weapons. Господин президент, поскольку мы э, уже затронули вопрос о ядерных вооружениях, э, мне не хотелось бы выглядеть пессимистом, но складывается впечатление, что в Москве вряд ли будет возможно подписать договор о 50% сокращении стратегических ядерных вооружений при соблюдении договора по противоракетной обороне. И все же, каковы, на ваш взгляд, перспективы заключение этого важнейшего для мира соглашения. Well, I still think it can be concluded, but uh, it would be, I think, overly optimistic with the time limitations to believe that uh, it could be ready for signature as the INF treaty was uh, here in the previous meeting. But we're going to continue negotiating. It would be nice if we could have achieved a signing ceremony there on this, this visit. But this treaty is far uh, more technical and complicated uh, than the treaty we did sign. And so the experts on both sides who have been uh, working on uh, this in Geneva uh, have not been able to make the progress that was made in the earlier treaty. But they're going to continue, I'm sure, And I think that perhaps we can advance it uh, in our conversations, discussion uh, in Moscow in this. But we must, the idea is to continue until we have the treaty that is correct and not simply try to meet a date and sign a treaty that might not be all that we would desire. Вы верите, что он будет подписан, этот договор? Yes, I do. I don't think either of us have gone this far with the idea that uh, it wasn't a good idea. Господин президент, хочу задать вам немножко личный вопрос. Могли бы вы в начале вашего президентства, когда вы только пришли в этот овальный кабинет, представить себе э, вероятность вашего предстоящего визита в Москву? Probably not, because very frankly, I have to say, I think there is a difference between this general secretary and uh, other leaders of your country that I had met with in the past. I don't think they uh, had any dreams of perestroika. And uh, yet I felt that we had to exist in the world together. Our systems are different. We're going to be competitive in a number of ways, and that'll continue, but we can be competitive without being hostile to the point of conflict with each other. And uh, I think this is what we're, uh, what we're aiming at. And uh, no, I could not have foreseen uh, your present leader. Новые времена рождают новых лидеров. Yes. Можно заключить, что вы рассчитываете на то, что ваш преемник продолжит курс на стабилизацию советско-американских отношений, что не возникнет пауза в диалоге между нашими странами? 
Well, if the next president is the president I would like to see there, the present vice president, I know he would continue on this track. And, uh, but I think that our people uh, want this. I have had a visit just the other day here in the White House with 78 young teenagers. And half of them were from the Soviet Union and half were students of ours. They had been holding a conference in Finland and then in Moscow and now here in the United States. And you looked out at those young people and you couldn't say, well, those are Russians and those are Americans. You, you just saw young people who had learned to know each other, exchange ideas, get acquainted. And I found myself saying to them, if all the young people of the world could get to know each other, there'd never be another war. Господин президент, я не могу не задать вам вопроса, который интересует советскую общественность, многих простых людей в нашей стране. В своих речах вы не раз э, цитировали э, работы Ленина, э, ссылались на них. Э, на те работ, э, в этих цитатах речь шла о экспансионистских замыслах э, советских коммунистов. Э, советские специалисты, насколько я знаю, из американской печати, э, работники библиотеки Конгресса, квалифицированные люди, внимательно проштудировали все сочинения Ленина и не нашли ни одной э, из подобных цитат или даже что-нибудь приблизительно такое. Поэтому я хочу спросить вас, э, что вы читали из произведений Ленина и откуда берутся те цитаты, которыми вы пользовались? Oh my, <laughs> I don't think I could recall and specify here and there, but uh, I've had a, I'm old enough to have had a great in interest uh, in the Soviet Union. And I know that in the things I studied uh, in college, when I was getting my own degree in economics and sociology, that the declarations of Karl Marx, for example, that Karl Marx said, your system, communism, could only succeed when the whole world had become communist. And so the goal had to be the one world communist state. Now, as I say, I can't recall all of the sources from which I gleaned this, and maybe uh, some things have uh, been interpreted differently as uh, in modern versions. But I know that Lenin uh, exp uh, expounded on that and said that that must be the goal. But I also know, and this didn't require reading Lenin, that every leader, every general secretary, but the present one, had, in appearances before the Soviet Congress, reiterated their allegiance to that Marxian theory that the goal was a one-world communist state. This man has not said that. And uh, so I wasn't making anything up. These were the things we were told. For example, uh, uh, here in uh, our government, we knew that uh, Lenin had ex expressed a part of the plan that involved Latin America and so forth. And the one line that uh, sounded very ominous to us was when he said that the last bastion of capitalism, the United States, would not have to be taken. It would fall into their outstretched hand like overripe fruit. Я хочу сказать, что согласно Библии все хотят попасть в рай, но никто не предлагает делать это насильно и ускорять этот процесс. Все должно идти естественно. Вот наша точка зрения. Well, wouldn't you think, though, that uh, these two systems obviously were competitive in the world with each other, in the economic situation, industry, and so forth? The difference between private ownership and government ownership of the uh, sources of material, industry, and so forth, agriculture? Well, wouldn't you think that it would make 
the most sense to compete legitimately as business firms compete with each other and uh, see which does the better job. Безусловно, когда мы говорим о том, что мы считаем, что рано или поздно мир придет к социализму, мы имеем в виду просто исторический процесс. Каждая страна должна решать для себя. Мы считаем, что страны капиталистические, страны социалистические должны мирно сосуществовать на одной нашей небольшой планете yes. и сотрудничать друг с другом. Well, yes, we believe that also. But uh, there was a time when, as I say, we were faced with uh, declarations of the need to take over and expand. And uh, on, on the part of, in this instance, of the, of the communist philosophy. I think, as I've said earlier here, just this, this normal competition and find out which system is best. And then we have this one thing in which possibly we differ. And that is that we believe the people of a country have the right to determine what form of government they'll have. You have a constitution. We have a constitution. The difference between our two constitutions is very simple. It's contained in three words. Both of the constitutions uh, announce things for the people's benefit and so forth. Your constitution says, these are the privileges and rights that the government provides for the people. Our constitution says, we the people will allow the government to do the following things. And the government can do nothing that is not prescribed by the people in that constitution. And so where we run into conflict sometimes in countries where there is a stirring and, and a division and trying to determine a government, our view is the people must have the right to say this is the government we want. It must not be imposed on them. Ну, конечно, президент, наш... я хочу в связи с этим сказать, что ну, демократия – это, конечно, великая цель всех народов. Но вот если взять конкретно, сейчас общественное мнение Соединенных Штатов, согласно опросам Конгресс, выступают против действий против Никарагуа, а вопреки этим настроениям, Администрация действует немножко в другом направлении. Yes, of course you must remember that each congressman is elected only by a district, his congressional district. This is the only job in our country that is elected by all of the people. And uh, therefore, and the responsibility that the people have laid on this office in the Constitution is that the President is responsible for our national security. And uh, that is a duty he cannot shirk. And so he must, uh, he is the final word as to what is essential to that national security. You were going to say something. <laughs> существовании капиталистических и социалистических государств. Я хочу напомнить, что Владимир Ильич Ленин, наш первый руководитель, именно ему принадлежит концепция мирного сосуществования. Но мне хотелось бы перейти к другому вопросу. Вы в своих выступлениях довольно часто затрагиваете очень важную проблему. Проблему прав человека. Но, как правило, при этом говорите о положении с правами человека в других странах. Мне бы хотелось сегодня спросить у вас, вот вы как президент Соединенных Штатов, как гражданин США, вы удовлетворены положением с правами человека в собственной стране? That make it law-breaking to implement those prejudices and to try to do things unjustly to other people. You have to remember one great difference about our country. A man put it to me in a letter once, and that is that you could leave here 
and go to France to live. But you could not become a Frenchman. Or you could go uh, to live in Germany or Turkey or name any country. You could not become one of them. This is the only country in the world in which anyone from every, any corner of the world can come here and become an American because that's our history. We came from every corner of the world. You meet with a group of Americans. We went around this room for the Americans present and asked them their background, their ancestry, and so forth. You'd have quite a collection. As a matter of fact, uh, my own background, uh, going back to uh, grandparents and great-grandparents, uh, covers four countries, different countries. But here in this melting pot. So the result is that we do have uh, the people that came here came not only with a desire for freedom, but they also brought with them many of the prejudices that existed because of con national differences between various countries. And um, this is something we've had to guard against. So the human rights here are protected. People may have and do have their people that have a prejudice against someone of another faith, someone of another background or race. But if they do anything to hurt that person because of that prejudice, the law takes care of them. Я думаю, что о правах человека в последнее время говорилось много, поэтому мне хочется задать вам вопрос, вернувшись к вашему предстоящему визиту в Москву. Господин президент, я не хочу выпытывать никаких секретов у вас, но можно ли узнать, что вы везете в Москву в вашем дипломатическом портфеле и что вы хотели бы оттуда увезти? Well, as I said earlier, the same things that we've talked about before and tried to come together in a meeting of the minds, those basically those four major areas. Yes, that's what we will we'll talk about. Now, I recognize that uh, uh, one country can't dictate to another as to uh, how they must run their own affairs, and uh, maybe some of the things that we'll talk about are things that I believe maybe we could be, based on our own experience, be helpful. For example, among human rights. I was quite interested recently when the General Secretary, uh, meeting with the leaders of your Orthodox Church, uh, lessened some of the restrictions that government had imposed on the practice of that religion. Well, I've wondered if a further expansion of that. You see, our, our country came into being because people were being denied in other countries the right to worship God as they saw fit. And so they left those countries and came to this new land as pioneers in order to worship. Well, I've just wondered if, if there isn't a field there in your own country for a more openness and the allowing of people to practice religion in the ways they chose. And here we call it separation of church and state. The government cannot deny people the right to worship, but by the same token, the, the, the churches cannot impose on government their beliefs. Я думаю, что действительно тема прав человека заслуживает, чтобы о ней много говорить. И хочу задать вам в связи с этим такой вопрос. Вот недавно в Вашингтоне, я читал об этом в американских газетах, был генерал Стресснер, э, диктатор из Парагвая. Э, когда вы встречаетесь с советскими руководителями, это было и в Женеве, и в Рикьявике, и в Вашингтоне, вы всегда затрагиваете тему прав человека. Это, наверное... Правильно. Вот обсуждаете ли вы эту тему э, с генералом Стрестером, с руководителями Чили, Южной Кореи, Южной Африки? Возникает ли в ваших э, беседах тема прав человека? О, да, нет, нет вопроса, но это мы верим, и в нашем взаимодействии с другими странами, что это проблема. For one reason, because of the background of all of our people. Government is influenced by public opinion. We are supposed, as you mentioned earlier, we are supposed to do in the Congress and here in this office, 
basically what meet the needs of the people, what the people want. And so when, you, when we are seeking to be neighbors and, uh, and friends of another country, and that country is uh, jailing people for uh, just their expression of political difference or wanting to practice religion or things of that kind, we have a great many people whose heritage is in those countries. And you have to remember that even though we're all Americans, a man doesn't give up love for his mother because he's taken a wife. And so the people in our country all still feel a kind of heritage and relationship with the countries of their ancestry, or maybe their own if they're new immigrants who are here in the country. One out of eight of our people have our background in your area. And those people can rise up and oppose us in some agreement that we may want to make a friendship if they feel that the country of their ancestry is being unfair uh, and denying the, what they consider a human rights. Now, maybe your country you don't have uh, place that much uh, importance on, on, uh, the, on public opinion. But here in our system, it is the very basis of our system. And so uh, we can get along and make treaties much better with each other uh, as governments if our people are not rebellious about something that your government is doing uh, to what they consider the, their ancestry. Вы скоро будете в Москве, я думаю, что вы получите возможность ознакомиться с тем, как действует общественное мнение в Советском Союзе и какова свобода вероисповедования в нашей стране. А мне, Но, э, извини, э, а мне хотелось бы э, в заключение, поскольку но, время э, наше подходит к концу, э, задать вам личный вопрос, господин президент. Э, большинство президентов в этой стране по окончании срока занимаются мемуарами. Готовитесь ли вы к написанию мемуаров и когда мы сможем, если они будут, с ними ознакомиться? Well, I've been thinking very seriously about writing a book in view of the fact that several people who have left government have written some books. I think maybe I better straighten out the record <laughs> and tell things as they really are. And so uh, uh, it's possible that I will, but remember there's another thing in our country that has become a tradition. People, not government, voluntarily provide money and funds and build what is called a presidential library and museum. And this is happening with me. This is going forward. There is a group in the country. They've raised the millions of dollars. In California will be built this structure. Now in that building will be the millions of papers from this administration. They will be open. Scholars can come and study them and research and so forth. And there will be also many things that will be of interest to the people, uh, memorabilia, from uh, that, that we've accumulated here. And uh, this has happened with all the presidents in the recent years. So uh, there too will be a record that is open for public view, but uh, I'll probably get around to writing a book. I don't look forward to it. I wrote a book once <laughs> and found it was quite a chore. Ну, мне остается, поскольку время наше истекло, поблагодарить вас за это интервью и пожелать большого успеха в предстоящей миссии. Спасибо, господин президент. Well, thank you very much. May I just stand for the standing in lines to bring home what is necessary for the family and all of that. And I just wonder if they're getting the credit within your country that I think they deserve. Они заслуживают, они не только стоят в очередях, но 
подавляющее большинство из них работает вместе с мужчинами, yes. преподает, лечит детей, участвует в администрации. И я надеюсь, что вы сможете своими глазами увидеть все это, когда приедете в нашу страну. Well. Well, you said it better than I did, but yes, I recognize all of those things and uh, just wondered if they get the recognition they deserve within their own country. Еще раз большое спасибо, господин президент, за это интересное интервью. Well, I'm pleased and I welcome you and enjoyed it very much and I appreciate greatly the opportunity to, to speak to your people. Спасибо.